Hi, my name is Hamza Tahir. I'm one of the co-creators of ZenML, which is a framework to create production-ready machine learning pipelines. Today, we're going to be going through a walkthrough of how to create a local pipeline, uh, like using the open source package of ZenML, and then using the Kubeflow pipelines integration of ZenML to then deploy this pipeline onto a more production-ready ML op stack. Let's see how to do it. So as you can see, I have a notebook open. This is local to me. I've uh, essentially installed ZenML already. And then I also would need to install these integrations. So I need sklearn and Kubeflow for this particular um, task. And this cell I've already run, so I know that I have it installed already. Um, the next thing I wanna do is actually initialize a repository uh, on Git because this, um, like ZenML is built on top of Git. So you want to initialize the Git repository and a ZenML repository. I've already done so, and you can see um, how that looks like. So what has that done? Essentially, what it has done is it has created a local directory, which with a configuration or a bunch of configurations for your ML op stack. Now, currently, the default stack, as you can see, is the local stack. And this is what the local stack looks like. Uh, it has an orchestrator, which is essentially your Python kernel. So um, that's quite easy. It has an artifact store, which stores all the artifacts that flow between steps. And it has a metadata store, which keeps track of all these artifacts and also all the parameters that flow through your pipelines and various other things. Um, the pipeline itself is going to be very simple, just uh, an importing step, a normalization, a training and evaluate. Step. This is a very typical pipeline. Uh, real world pipelines are a bit more complex than this, but for illustration purposes, we stick with this. So you have already have this in place now just by doing ZenML in it. Um, the next thing you might want to do is import um, your um, imports, obviously, because we want to be building this pipeline out. So the cool thing about ZenML is that all steps can be defined as functions using the functional API. All you have to do is define a function, uh, define its inputs, define its outputs, and then write Python code in the middle. Um, normal Python code, you don't really need anything. You don't even need to um, specify how to store these things in the artifact stores. ZenML takes care of that for you. Um, and you just need to decorate that function with the step decorator, which you import from ZenML. So the first step is just importing the digits data set. This is a typical data set for computer vision tasks. And the second step is normalizing it using the standard deviation and mean. Lastly, or well, uh, second last is the trainer step. The trainer step takes the normalized data and trains a model on it. And then there's the evaluator step, which actually evaluates it and prints out the accuracy that we got on the set. Um, you would perhaps have noticed that one of the steps has cache disabled. Now, as you flow through this pipeline, you might have many iterations uh, as is normal in machine learning. So uh, the awesome feature that ZenML brings natively uh, in your workflow is that it caches these the outputs and inputs of these steps for you. So if, for example, you changed some downstream step, like let's say uh, the normalizer, then you would, um, like you can run a pipeline again with uh, the updated function or step but it would still skip all the upstream steps if they have not changed. In the case of the trainer, however, we want for this particular demo for uh, uh, the cache to be disabled because we always want the model to train. So I've just made that explicit here. All right, now let's actually string all these functions together. Uh, this is also similarly easy with the pipeline, uh, like a decorator, you just define all the steps that make up a pipeline, you define what goes out of the steps and what goes into the next steps, uh, which is quite simple, simple Python code. And then finally, you actually run the pipeline um, by calling it concretely and using the dot run method. Now here you can see cache, cache is enabled, um, the local orchestrator is being used, and you can see how each step started and finished and the accuracy was printed. 91% uh, is quite decent. And uh, here you go, you've already created your first uh, 
XML pipeline all locally. You didn't need to do spin up anything uh, fancy on the infrastructure side, it just worked. Uh, these artifacts that flowed between these steps would also have been stored and persisted. And there's a lot of things you can do in the post execution workflow to now compare results and see lineage and all that things. But those are uh, for, uh, like a bunch of features for some other video. What we want to focus on today is actually transitioning such a pipeline to Kubeflow pipelines, which is uh, a very cool tool, uh, like one of the tools that people use in production to run machine learning pipelines. Uh, or orchestrate them specifically. And uh, you can actually run ZenML pipelines on Kubeflow pipelines as well. The problem is there's a lot of steps in the middle to actually use Kubeflow pipelines. And ZenML makes these uh, tasks way easier. So in order to run past this point in the notebook, you need Docker K3D and kubectl installed. They're actually quite trivial to install. Um, but uh, uh, if you have those in your machine, you're all ready to go. That's really all you need to run the rest of the tutorial. Um, what we're going to be doing now is replacing the local stack with a so-called local Kubeflow stack. Now, what does that mean? What that means is with the same pipeline, you want to be running it on um, a ML ops infra stack, which is a bit more closer to production than just running it on the Python kernel, right? Because in production, you have so many more things going on. You have like Docker images being created, containers being run in a Kubernetes cluster, for example. Um, and there are many more things that you have to take care of so that your pipeline is robust and repeatable and reproducible. So the way like XenML helps with that is it lets you create these stacks and then deploy the pipelines on those stacks. So in this particular case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating, replacing the local orchestrator with the local Kubeflow pipelines orchestrator and also adding to the stack a container registry to store Docker images. And we'll see how that bears fruit in a second. Um, you wanna be switching now from writing functions in a notebook to actually writing them to files. Um, that's just a requirement, um, but it's quite simple to write files in a notebook. So it's you can actually stay within this cool environment. And let's start defining this stack. So. The first thing we do is register a container registry um, and we give it its options. Uh, you can just copy this. We also register a Kubeflow orchestrator. This is also very simple. And then we take the Kubeflow orchestrator and the local registry and we actually register them in this local Kubeflow stack. And then we set this local Kubeflow stack as active. And that's really all you need. Now you're already there. Uh, like XenML now knows that the active stack is the local Kubeflow stack. Uh, the next time you run a pipeline, it's going to try to deploy your pipeline code into this particular stack. Um, before you do that, however, you need to spin that stack up. Uh, so the local stack, you didn't need to spin up because it was all, all local. In this particular case, you're going to have to spin up the Kubeflow pipelines orchestrator, which runs on a Kubernetes cluster. And here we're going to be, uh, like you see the ease of using XenML is that this is all taken care of for you. One of the biggest pain points of Kubeflow pipelines is that you can't use it locally and XenML solves it for you. All you have to do is press XenML stack up and within a few minutes, it should be spinning up um, and bootstrapping resources for the orchestra. All right, we're back. Um, you can see that the XenML stack up command within six minutes span up actually a Kubeflow pipelines um, daemon and deployed the Kubeflow pipelines on localhost 8080 for us. And you can actually see if I go here that Kubeflow pipelines is indeed deplo deployed completely locally. This is fantastic and it was very easy, but how about writing and deploying the pipeline there? So that's also similarly very easy. All you have to do is create a file called run.py or whatever um, Python file you want. Um, and this is exactly the same code as we've seen before, just put together in one block. And then I will run it using Python. Very simple. This will also take a few minutes to run. Um, and I will explain when I come back what happened when I did run this command. So within, I would say, a minute or so, um, this function is done. And look what happened. So first of all, it detected that the Kubeflow orchestrator 
And then it did a whole bunch of things and it actually deployed uh, it on Kubeflow pipelines. And if I switch over, I can indeed see a new run in my Kubeflow pipelines localhost. And if I go in there, I could already see that the importer step is starting. Now, here's the really cool thing about what just happened. So first of all, all of your code was containerized um, or an image was created with your local code uh, and all the local container registry that we referenced, right? And now this um, image is being used to create containers for each of the steps and your code is being run within them. So you don't even need to know how Kubernetes works or whatever to see this happening. And you can see the first step is already done. And you can, if you go to the logs of these, the cool thing about this is that because we're using the same metadata store and artifact store um, as we did previously, actually um, caching is enabled. So these steps are actually just being started and stopped, um, except the trainer, of course. The trainer will train uh, with some logs and um, or uh, like, like will train and create a model. And the evaluator will also run uh, and we will be able to see the logs there as well. So you can see that just like that, we have a running Kubeflow pipelines pipeline um, through the window of HazNML. And you can easily now transition this over to a cloud setting, uh, something that we will cover perhaps in a future video uh, and especially in our docs. Um, and you can see indeed this was run. You can see it printed out a new accuracy. And now we have a finished Kubeflow pipelines pipeline within a few seconds. And all we had to do, we didn't even need to change the code, we just needed to change um, the, the stack. And voila, you are at a point where you, are, you can now say that you deployed a really robust uh, piece of data science code onto a stack, infrastructure stack, which is uh, geared towards uh, a more of a production setting. Now, if I wanted to now fetch these pipelines and see their results again, I could at any point um, from history, right? So all I could do is fetch the repository, get the pipelines, get the MNIST pipeline specifically. I mean, it's going to be the first one and then get all its runs. The MNIST run is the first one and the Kubeflow MNIST run uh, or the digits run is the second one. So if you see now the steps, you would be able to see that the IDs are a bit different. Uh, as you would expect. But if I was to fetch the evaluator step of each of these, I would be able to actually materialize or see the results of, um, of in their individual evaluators. Now, in this case, there's exactly the same. I mean, it's deterministic, but uh, these are actually separately uh, calculated and we're running in different stacks. So that's it, congratulations. Um, if you liked what you saw today, I would encourage you to visit the docs uh, and our GitHub. Um, ZenML is completely open source. It's built um, by us for the community and we are actually um, wanting to have more contributors to the code base because our goal here is to make production ready data science and machine learning workflows easy and accessible for everyone out there, especially the data scientists who want to own their models in production. Um, we're going to be building out many different sorts of stacks and different integrations into awesome tools um, in the future. And you can see that in our open roadmap. Um, if you want to chat with us directly, please go to our Slack channel. Um, this particular uh, code example will be in our GitHub as well under the Kubeflow example. So hope to see everyone there. Please give us a star and leave a pull request if you see anything that's missing. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Have a good one.